Once again, thanks for pressing the play button. Jazz Talk News, that's jazztalk.news, can be now found on Spotify, iTunes and other well-known platforms. You can also see us on the podcast page of jazzineurope.com. Now, enjoy the show. Get totally jazzed. Jazz Talk News with Nigel J. My special guest on this episode is Claudia Campagnol, a well-regarded singer and multi-instrumentalist. Claudia makes her family home in Copenhagen, Denmark. And Claudia and I talk about her inspirations for her music that she creates, and she shares her viewpoint as a woman in the music industry today, and how she approaches any stereotyping remaining strong. In fact, I'm Strong is actually the title of her debut album. Hear how performing with Stevie Wonder and their time spent together after the gig visiting Jasus Montmartre Club in Copenhagen resulted in the track All Through You and how this led me to seeking her out for this interview. Claudia is very candid as she shares the different experiences that have resulted in four of the tracks of her new debut album. Listen in and immerse yourself in the eclectic jazz mix of Claudia Campagnol's universe. Claudia, welcome to the show. I really appreciate having you here. How are you today? Thank you. I'm very fine. I'm very happy that you invited me to this, Nigel. I'm looking forward to talk about some music. Well, it's a real pleasure. Your new album, it's this debut album, is very, very exciting. Um, I did do a CD review about you, and what I said in that was that you captured me into your musical universe within the first 10 seconds um, <laughs> in, in, in listening to the track all through you. But yeah. I, I think that's wonderful, and I, it, it sort of made me say, hey, you know, this lady's really getting these things right. Jazz music, what's, in my opinion, frustratingly called adult contemporary um, is a convenient <laughs> box to put things in. I, I wouldn't say that about you. For me, if I have to label it, it's soul jazz. Um, do you have a any label for your music? Well, um, I think I love to think of music. When I write music, I don't think in labels. I think in... Um, I really don't think at all. I just feel stuff... <laughs> coming out of me uh, and I want to I want it to be uh, I want the music to be as natural as possible mm -hmm. um, but of course uh, I mean my voice is pretty solely I guess uh, my music is pretty uh, fusionistic mm -hmm. <laughs> fusionized in a way hey some new um, words here <laughs> <laughs> um yeah it's like futuristic and fusion yeah in one word um because it's not really some sounds are from the 80s absolutely i love the fusion from the 80s um but it's a little bit more um up to date i guess so i would say vocal fusion or soul jazz or smooth fusion maybe there's a little bit of pop in there as well. Mm -hmm. So a lovely mixture. That's this eclectic mix mm -hmm. of the sum total of who you are from early childhood and everything about your experiences. I, it, it really feels to me that, that it's expressed in this album. Would, would I be right about that? Absolutely. I feel like I'm a mix of everything because I was born in Budapest in Hungary. Mm -hmm. And then we came to Sweden together with my parents as uh, I was only two years old. So also living. Yeah, uh, we are gypsies. So we have wow, that's a very fantastic. rich culture. Mm -hmm. um, also with very exciting music. Mm -hmm. um, and then I grew up in... <laughs> Um, yeah, jazz, fusion, soul, pop music. But also my dad, he played in a Latin salsa band. So I was singing uh, in Spanish already when I was 11 years old. 
So I did a lot of gigs at the, at as um, by by the age of eleven already, and that filled me with rhythms from Latin America, uh, also from Brazil and uh, the Cuban salsa culture and all that. So yeah, I guess I'm a mix, and on top of that, being a part of Sweden, um, getting Swedish influences. Uh, not really ABBA, I would say, <laughs> <laughs> but something else like Lisa Nilsson mm. or um, Eric Gad, mm -hmm. um, Robin, a pop singer, yeah, that collaborated uh, with Snoop Dogg. You uh, did as well, yeah, yeah. So then I met Nicholas, Nicholas's drummer on the CD, and he's also my husband. Yeah, the Italian husband, right? Exactly. Wow, you lucky girl. So I moved to, yeah, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> so I moved to Denmark because he was living in Copenhagen and I didn't want to be in boring Sweden. <laughs> <laughs> well, you didn't want to be away but... from the man you love, right? Exactly. Yeah. But I guess Copenhagen and Denmark, or yeah, much more Copenhagen is a rich city in that way it's multi multicultural in a different way especially when it comes to jazz music yes it is so i'm definitely a mix of everything and that's why my music i guess is also mixed up honestly i i, I really love it um for me Thank you. i listen to lots of music obviously uh, jazz music and back to you i i, I want to talk if i can about the title song of your yeah. JBR album, uh, which is called, as the album is, I'm Strong. Yes. Can you, you know, that's a bold statement and I love it. But, <laughs> and, and tell me what, what, what that means for you and the lyrics and, and your motivations for writing that track. Well, I got a call from a good friend of mine who's also a great singer. Her name is Vivian Buczek and she's from Poland, but she lives in Malmo, Sweden. She asked me to, to write a song for her. Okay. Uh, and she knew right away that I would I would write something different because she's she's singing a lot of jazz, but she's also very uh, she has a passion for soul and and um, she wanted something that was a little bit more of a mix. Mm -hmm. So um, I wrote that song uh, for her actually um, to use, and which I so which I later used myself, of course, um, for this album, but. I think it's a statement made because as a woman, especially in jazz, mm -hmm. um, it's, it's quite, it can be quite hard and difficult sometimes to, to feel secure and to feel motivated, to feel um, powerful. Mm -hmm. uh, and not only as a singer, because I'm not, just a singer i'm a i'm a multi instrumentalist which means that i have to be able to get up on stage and play with the guys yeah i really hate the expression play like the guy mm. or the guys play like mm. the guys but that's really a fact today because i know a lot of singers out there they they sing great they can get up on stage and they can pull a song off but they don't feel comfortable because they don't have, they're not nerds like the guys or like I am. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a very important issue to bring up for the women to say, hey, you can do this. You can absolutely be strong and be really comfortable in what you're doing. You just mm -hmm. need to know what you need to learn. <laughs> yeah. Um, to be honest, many, many musicians, they always told me, ah, oh, yeah, I like singers, but, you know, that but thing is, <laughs> yes, is, is a little, um, it's just because, you know, singers, they don't dive into the music. They don't nerd. They get, they, they don't get deep enough in theory, music theory and stuff that are really important for all musicians um and that's the truth that's the truth that's a fact mm -hmm. um that i see everywhere not only in scandinavia i i hear you 
and and I agree with you. And I I think that once once you reach a certain level of musicianship, from that point onwards, I think the individual personality really comes into play. Firstly, yeah. regardless of gender, because when you go on tour with people, <laughs> you know you've mm. got to spend a lot of time with them. So mm. that's also important about their personalities, if possible. Uh, yeah. And everybody's got some level of eccentricity. And it mm. it does it is a challenge, I understand, for for women sometimes in jazz because they get and it is frustrating, they get stereotyped um as this object rather than recognizing them for their creativity first. Right. You know, they're just looking from the outside rather than the inside. For me, when you get extra feel or energy, and it's a very difficult thing to quantify in words, mm. but, but when I hear it, and I, that's why we're talking today, because I heard it in you, I want to just play the track now so that the listeners can get a sense of having heard what you said, my response, and then listening to the track. Is that okay? Of course. My thin dressing gown I am wandering around There are pearls on the floor I won't wear them no more From the sun going down Till the morning hits town I am dreaming to find the mistake I made my memories coming through my eyes they're hurting me but night turns bright I'm strong for a while I can sleep when I stand up on my feet. Maybe all that has gone is now somewhere it belongs. All the paper and ink are just words, words that I sing, but inside. Fantastic. Thank you. Love it. <laughs> now I'm I'm really it listening to the album. I've listened to it eight times, by the way. Okay, wow. <laughs> yeah. 
Uh, That's more than, than I have. <laughs> <laughs> um, the next track I'm, I'm really excited to ask you about is actually the first track I heard. And this is the one that got me in the first 10 seconds where you pulled me into your universe. And that is oh, all, okay. all through you. And I love the, the treatment of the voice at the beginning. And there's a, a real, correct me if I'm wrong, but for me, there's sense, there was a sense of a, a real ethnicity somehow. Yeah. In that, in that it was almost like a chanting. Mm. And it was a calling. Yeah. And I, I just, it hit me really deeply. And I just, wow, wow this, and you did, you drew me in. But that was what I received from it in that first 10 seconds. I'd love you to tell us all what All Through You means for you and, and what brought it about for you. I got a gig in a rather small gospel choir. We were in Copenhagen. I lived in Malmo back then, and, and we were heading to Copenhagen, and I was so excited because we were about to sing the backing vocals for Stevie Wonder. Mm. The Stevie, right? Yeah, yeah the one so, and only. Um, <laughs> yeah, the one and only Wonder. So we did the gig, and I was so high on everything. Afterwards, we, we were at Montmartre, Mm -hmm. uh, the jazz club yeah and um just for for, was, lis for listeners that's in the center of copenhagen exactly yeah and um he was he was so down to earth i i talked to him and he was holding my hand and he was mm. you know i i got really really close and he just boosted me with this inspiration mm that I just couldn't, when I came home after that night, I think it was like seven or eight in the morning. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so when I came home, I wanted to hit the bed and I wanted to sleep, but I couldn't. Mm -hmm. I was so high on this experience. So I just jumped to the piano and this song just came out of me. Oh, fantastic. What, what a wonderful privilege to meet and be that close with Stevie Wonder. In a way, it was like huge, but also I've met so many great musicians that I really look up to. So for me, it was, you know, somehow I could just feel the the love, the warmth. And also, yeah, he's also a human, you know, he's a human being Yeah. <laughs> to realize that, hey, he's not even that tall. You know, yeah. he was totally chill and laid back, like a real musician, a real open soul. I hear you and I resonate with that. So let's play this track so that everybody can hear it and absorb it. Hopefully get captivated like I did in the first 20 seconds, but let's play this track now, okay? Yes.
I love that whole track. I'm very sensitive to music. It's a whole body experience for me. Yeah. That chant, as we say, just went straight into me, just straight into my heart. And it was like, wow. And you got me, as I said, you got me. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you still have. I heard this next track I just wanted to ask you about, which is Conquer the World. What a great title, firstly. Yes. And all the musicians on this album are absolutely fantastic. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, you know, I don't want to pick one out, but I'm going to have to. But Jimmy Haslip on this track is absolutely stellar. Yeah. Yes, he is. I'm so happy that he, he could do this. Also, Vinny, Vinny Kaliuta on the track. I, I never thought I could get Vinny because he's, you know, out playing with um, Staying or Herbie. So yeah, really, really busy guy, right? Um, but we managed. I think they really felt the track as well. What was the process writing those lyrics for this track? Well, when I write music, I, I never write the lyrics first or the chords first or the melody first. It all comes in one package. Sorry, it floods in? Yeah, absolutely. And that's very important to me. I could never sit and write a song um, for two weeks or sometimes even two days. It has to be, it all just comes out of me. That's because I, I feel like I really have something to say. That song, I felt like, okay, we all know that the music business is so harsh. It's all about looking good. It's all about, you know, just, it's very shallow. Um, and I'm not talking about music. I'm talking about the business, music business. And that's how it is. And as a musician, you are all but shallow. Because when you're a musician, you express yourself through music. And that's an art form by itself that is international. You You can't put words on music when I write something I guess that's why the lyrics come together with the melody I really mean it I I don't like to hmm let's write a song about that or maybe I do people you know they write a melody or they write a whole song without lyrics and then you just you know put lyrics on top of that 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 doesn't feel natural for me to me I heard a real as I do throughout the whole album, an, an authentic integrity coming from you. you know, like you, I'm in mm. this business. And <laughs> to me, it's a little bit like the Pacific Ocean. Um, it's full of sharks, jellyfish, mm. but occasionally there are <laughs> islands of um, sanctuary. You can go and just be with people that you really feel you can trust and resonate with so i understand and i want to thank you for that because i think that's a very very important and courageous thing to do especially on a debut album and so i, co I commend you for that mm. let's hear that um and let let everybody else experience the lyrics okay Tell by one look this song takes place in your head when you hear me sing your story out loud. How could she know? When did I show? There's nothing we can't hide. We all need to kill our pride. Cause when we do, we can see the inside. People live underneath the cold of the earth and such hard truth in so many prayers. 
absolutely wonderful. And one of the things I really appreciate about the production of this album is that the people mm. playing the bass have just got their noise levels right. <laughs> you can really feel this real synergy between everybody. Mm. I, I, I'm one of those people where, oh, turn the bass down a little bit, please. You know, there, there's some people just just overdo okay. it and um, you got it right. Well done. And, and to the whole production crew for that. <laughs> there's one final track I Thanks. just want to... I really love, <laughs> again, the title. Uh, this, the title makes me smile. It's called It Makes Me Glad. Wow. Yeah. How come this <laughs> did it for you? Oh, well, um, when I was about, yeah, I was a teenager, I guess, I started to listen to an a cappella group, a Swedish a cappella group called uh, The Real Group absolutely fantastic people they really know how to sing and they're so they're like a real unit you know when you hear them it's not five voices they're mm. like one big voice right um yeah they've been around for over 30 years so some of them stopped and they wanted some new people in um and i got the uh, call and i got up and did an audition for um i don't even remember if it was uh, as the mm -hmm. soprano or alto doesn't matter i was so happy for this because um i knew that they could something they they had something going on still after so many years they were professionals and it sounded like wow it's pretty much based on that experience that i had i i i was you know because first i thought yeah, this is absolutely what I want. You know, this is something that I really, mm. really would love to be a part of. But afterwards, I felt like, okay, you know what? I'm a musician. I actually need to play instruments. I, I couldn't do it for a long time. I could maybe do it for a year or two, but, and I love the guys. I really do love them, but I just couldn't. That's not, it's not me. Mm -hmm. um, so on my way home, uh, I took the train home from Stockholm to Malmo. And again, just the song came out of me. So I, I recorded it in on my iPhone, you know, and wrote down down the lyrics. And then I had the song. So and, and, and that's also why I, I made this a cappella part. Like half of the song is a cappella. So I, I, I love to do backing vocals. I love to do vocal arrangements. And when I do a vocal arrangement, it it just comes at the moment I'm doing it. So I'm not really writing it down or thinking about, okay, what should, what should I do there? What kind of layers should I do? It's just, it just comes out of me, you know? So very, very spontaneous, but very uh, authentic. Like you said, that's, I respect, I, yeah, I have to respect the music that way. I have mm -hmm. to respect myself and my musicality. And also after so many years of being nerdy, you know, <laughs> totally nerd, into the music that's that's a huge part of me i'm very happy i could do this album there's a beautiful relationship between the sound space and performance it all comes mm. as a very very cohesive package as i said before it feels very authentic it feels very integrous you wear your heart on your sleeve don't hold anything back mm. and and i appreciate that there's a lot of internal courage required to perhaps step out a little bit more some musicians mm. in, in a debut album you know, they're a little bit reserved and and they're nervous and 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 understandably so i i appreciate that what you've done i'd love for everybody to hear it makes me glad is that okay with you of course yeah sure it's what i want the most it's what i want I felt so devoted Sometimes a blessing comes your way 
And then you win by the end of the day Someone heard my prayer, I know I've never wanted anything more It was greater than all Of my expectations The sudden wizard of art And my own creation Sometimes a blessing comes your way And then you win by the end of the day Someone heard my prayer, I know I've never wanted anything more Sometimes a blessing comes your way And lets you win by the end of the day Someone heard my prayer I know I've never wanted anything more And then oh, da, 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 da. Fantastic. There's a resonance in your voice. Yeah. It's from a deep place and it comes through really, really clear. Your technical point of view, the pitch and so on and so forth is fantastic, but uh, it's more than that. Are you quite an emotional person? You know, I've been through a lot of unexplainable things in my life. And uh, I also grew up Christian, but in a way, you know, I also feel like sound waves is that that is god himself if you can say that so i i really i really yeah yeah mm -hmm. i mean himself yeah. it doesn't have to be a, a him that's what i mean by that so i just uh, i just feel like mm -hmm. i know that i'm very open and when you're open you're open yes you open up for anything and everything and i don't want to shut anything because I'm afraid I'm going to miss something. <laughs> I'm going to miss out on something. You know, it can be emotions. It can be, I'm kind of like a sponge in a way. So everything around me that's happening, I can absolutely say, okay, I, I don't care because I really don't care about when people try to destroy anything for me because I know that deep inside they have issues. So that, that's not a problem for, problem for me. But anything else around me, you know, if there are new things, new experiences, I love mm -hmm. it. Just hit me, give it to me, you know. 
So I'm very emotional in that way. That you shared you with me, and I, I thank you for that. It sounds like whether you're at home, you're as a, as a parent, a new parent, as a musician, I'm just wondering what does it feel like and what do you, when you get out on stage, you know, and you're performing, what do you feel you receive from the audience, you know, when, the, when they're listening to your, you know, your, your musical compositions, your arrangement and your performances? Oh, wow. I receive a lot of love, that's for sure, because people can see that I'm mm-hmm. open and, I, and I'm just being myself and I give my all. I, I guess I'm a bit of a diva as well. Yeah. You have to be. You have to love yourself. That's, a, that's, a, that's very mm-hmm. important for me. I love myself. I love my album. I love my music. The album wouldn't uh, be I'm Strong, right? So I, I'm hearing a person that has a very important thing, which is self-love. Yeah. I very much support that um, because, again, of my own philosophy. I hear a person who lives their life with uh, an important upbringing culturally and has experienced a wide range of things from an early age yeah that recognizes that 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 their faith in life and all exists extends beyond the physical realm Mm. vibration is where it all starts and that things are not just happenstance, they're more serendipitous. Absolutely. In how the world takes place. Mm. Is that, that's correct. Is that what I, because that's what I sense. That's totally, uh, what, I, I love what you just said about me. That's, that is me. That is me. Okay. 100%. Well, I got that in 10 seconds, honestly, when I first heard <laughs> you. That's great. <laughs> so, and again, that's why it's, a, it's an honor for me, actually, to be able to share this time with you today. And I'm excited. You know, I, I said before, how are you going to top this? So what's, what, what are your plans from this point forward? You, you know, you've got this great team mm. with you at uh, Giant Sheep Music. And, yes. um, you know, an important, there's a, people often forget the people behind the scenes. Yeah. Uh, Let's, hey, why don't you just give a shout out to those people now for everybody? I will do that right now. I want to thank, of course, my husband, who is mm-hmm. one of my greatest influences, who, who pushed me to, to get even better and recognize myself as a um, musician even more than I did from the start, because we met almost 12 years ago now. And at that time, I was... A little bit more of a singer than I was everything else, mm-hmm. um, and I, I wasn't insecure at all. But he absolutely he he said, "Hey, you know a lot. You know how to do this, and you can." So he actually he absolutely pushed me. So I want to thank him. Nicholas Campagnol is his name. One of the yeah. Well, my first pick as a drummer, absolutely anytime. <laughs> And he is good. Yeah. He just gets it right. <laughs> yes, he does. And yeah. Giant Sheep, Peter Sunbao and Susanna Bintz here mm-hmm. at Giant Sheep Music. They're wonderful, fantastic people. I love them. They're my family. Um, I also want to thank my my parents, of course, mm-hmm. who gave me so much love. Um, oh, yeah. And so much yeah. music from the start. And Gigi? Yeah, Gigi, that's my mom. And uh, yeah, what a great pianist. Yeah, and uh, she was also a piano player. She's not playing anymore. Yeah, but she played okay. for many, many years. She was a bar piano player who also sang mm-hmm. with me in her belly. <laughs> I must share this with people that Claudia's mom, Gigi, played in um, a lot of clubs and bars in what was the town again in the area? It was Budapest. In Budapest, that's right. And Gigi played almost right up to the point that she was giving birth to Claudia. So right. there's this wonderful little extra backstory here that um, Claudia was 
was being transported around by her mum while she was playing all these performances. So, of course, <laughs> I'm sure that you had your little headset on inside her tummy listening to the music. <laughs> a great image, right? Oh. And uh, so it's, no, it's no wonder that uh, you you really appreciate the vibrations of music from because you'd started from a very, very, very young age. Yeah, apparently I could sing uh, before I could talk. So I was singing in harmony when I was one and a half years old with my mom singing something else. And I mean, they didn't, you know, for them, it was just something natural, I guess. I don't know. But yeah, funny story. And actually, I did the same with my son. So the day he was supposed to be born, I was out playing a gig. And then he came two two days later. Yeah. <laughs> Any, any sense of um, what he's interested in playing or you know, instrument? Well, he, he sings all of the time. Okay, great. He does. Um, and then when we're out, because we also take him out, he's six years old now, so mm -hmm. we take him, you know, he's used to being out on gigs with us and travel and all that. So mm -hmm. he tells, you know, the sound guys, he goes up to them and say, you know what, I'm a drummer too, you know. <laughs> <laughs> It's fantastic. And, yeah. And tell me what what's next? I said before it's going to be difficult to top this album, but I want you to. So just give me a little bit of a sense of what your next set of plans are. Well, my next set of plans, let's say um, I wish that I could conquer the world mm -hmm. <laughs> in a positive way, uh, because when I sing conquer the world, I don't want to become some kind of a queen or anything like that. I want to become someone that can tell people we have to conquer the world world with love. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm singing, right? Yeah. And I really mean it. We only the only thing that can conquer anything is love. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Yes. So I hope um I hope that I just can come out and give other people support. That's the purpose, I think, uh, of music itself. Mm -hmm. To be able to give other people inspiration, show them love, feel, get them to feel love mm -hmm. and not feel fear or um, insecurity. Yeah. It's a, it's a great elixir and tonic for, the, sadly, the stress of the 21st century, and it's a vitally important antidote to those things. And mm. I want to, once again, it's been a real honor and a pleasure to um, share with you today. And for me, I'm excited about the future for you. I'm excited about your contribution. And I just wish you so much love, luck, and happiness. Thank you so much. Take care. Thank you, and you too. My name's Nigel Jay, and thank you for stopping by. And I look forward to sharing with you again soon.